Welcome to Ask Maureen, where we cover historical image analysis, genealogy, and how to work with your family photo collection. I'm Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, and I'll try to answer your questions. I love this BeLive platform because listeners can ask questions as they watch by commenting on the Facebook Live post on the Photo Detective Facebook page. Now, I hope you've been reading my blog. I've talked about ways to weed your collection. And so spring cleaning is the topic for today's Facebook Live. My reason for talking about this is not only because we need spring cleaning in our lives. Uh, I can remember when my mom did spring cleaning and fall cleaning, we did it twice a year. Uh, but this is in response to the Marie Kondo series on Netflix. If you haven't watched it, then you're in for a treat. I have to admit that after I watched it, I completely, completely ran into uh, some rooms in my house and reorganized everything. I had already cleaned out um, a few months ago, but I did do all of her folding comments and everything is nice and neat in my sock drawer and, you know, my clothing drawers, everything's nice and neat and I can find everything, which is amazing. So that was kind of cool. But then on one of the episodes, she helped people clean out some of their family photographs and I shut off the show immediately when I saw her sit on the floor and she took out a box of snapshots and put, like, she just sort of looked at it for a second and said, you know, yes, no. And most of them were no. And she tossed just lots and lots of snapshots. So condoizing, I believe, is the way we refer to cleaning out your house with Marie Kondo, is good for your clothes, but not for your heirlooms. It's, it's a difficult thing to part with things that have sentimental value and to think about weeding our photo collections, especially our 20th century, our lifetime photos, is, is one of the things we're going to talk about today. There are different types of photos, different categories, I guess you could say, of photographs that can be be cleaned out. So I am Maureen Taylor. I am known as the photo detective. And today we're going to talk about ways to tackle that overwhelming number of photos on your phone, your on my desktop, and of course in the boxes that we have in the closet. Now, one of the things I want to talk about before we start that discussion is I want to share some comments from readers and listeners that they've sent to me. And one of them is a woman, Annette, who sent me a nice email in response to my blog post called A Convenient Place, which is all about uh, storage lockers. And I've talked about this a number of times now, but the emails keep wandering in for this topic. So Annette shared a very personal story and I, and I really felt her pain with this and she allows me to share it with you. So to what she said was that she lost a storage unit that had photos and yearbooks in it and that when she found out that it was lost, she actually cried because she was never told I could go and claim them. In fact, she had spoken with the storage facility and begged them because they would have their payment the next day and they were set on getting payment that day. Yes, I have been in that position, Annette. And they wouldn't wait and never mentioned I could pick up anything afterwards. I didn't even think to ask about my photos. It was over 10 years ago, but she remembers it like it was yesterday because it was very painful. She lost a lot of things that were very personal to her. How many of you have ever used a storage unit to you know, put that excess stuff from your house. I mean, I've shared how I used it when we were moving and we, we had all this stuff that we had to get rid of, you know, the stage of the house as the realtors call it. And we did that. And we uh, then realized that once we moved, we actually didn't need any of that stuff and we got rid of it all. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Now, Mark Rachel says, 
that he saved a big box of photos at a junk sale just last weekend, 1860 to 1920. And that is absolutely true. Everywhere you go, you find photographs. Now, one of the things that's happening with the Marie Kondo uh, movement is that people are cleaning out their houses and then dropping off everything at Goodwill and uh, Big Brother, Big Sister, all the different places where you can you know, drop off things. And that's great, except that I shudder to think about how many family photographs end up over there, and I haven't been able to bring myself to go take a peek. Uh, I did drop off a load of stuff myself, <laughs> but not family photographs or family heirlooms. Now, one of the things I have spoken about a number of times, and Mark, Rachels, you'll understand this because you just bought a big box of photos at a junk sale last weekend, is the orphan photo movement of which I am part of and so are many of you. It's where you buy a photograph because you just can't leave it there. And then you reconnect or try to reconnect that photograph with family that might care about it. And so this woman sent me a letter and I actually got a letter, which is really nice. And Janice Brazil, I give you a big shout out. She heard me speak at a seminar and she said, I'm gonna go on one of Maureen's orphan photo adventures. And so she did. She bought a photo at a antique shop and then went back and bought more from the same family collection. And then she found their descendants. And then she wrote an article for her local genealogical society and then sent me a copy, which is really nice. It was so nice to get the mail and to hear about her adventures. And also I was really touched that I had inspired her to do something with the photos. Oh, and Kate Keller saying, Kate, I don't wanna know this. It's gonna make me wanna run right over there right after we're done here. So Goodwill will only keep photos for so long and then they trash them. We need a moment of silence for that. And Diane Gould Hall also does orphan photos. She says, hi, Maureen, I buy orphan photos at antique shops, et cetera, and I only buy the one with names so I can try to find families. Exactly. How many of those do we have? A lot. I have a lot. Kate Keller has a lot. Diane Gould Hall has a lot. So if you have an orphan photo adventure to share with me, send me an email. Let me know about it, and I'll feature it in this spot. So here we go. So Janice Brazil did that. Mark Rachel's bought some, Diane bought some, Kate bought some, and of course I buy them. That's one down or two down or five down and thousands more to go. So in a recent online article, someone wrote about how they weeded their collection. Now we're circling back to the spring cleaning your collection. It was comments to the process that totally stunned me. And it always stuns me when someone tells me that they've done this and because you're listening here at the photo detective, you may may not uh, hear these things, or maybe you feel the same way that I do, but out there in the greater world, photos have different value. So someone wrote in the comments to this online article that they had scanned and tossed all of the originals, that they were so happy that the corner of their living room was no longer cluttered with images, that they could rest easy that they had now scanned them all. And it's not the first time I've heard that as a solution, but is it really a solution? Because I know, I don't know about you, but, but I've had a computer crash and I've lost everything. And if you're gonna scan, what DPI did they scan at? Did they scan at 72 DPI, which is really only good for the web? Or did they scan at 600 or 1200 DPI, which is the standards uh, supported by the Library of Congress. I mean, if you don't scan at the right resolution as TIFF files and then back it up and back it up and back it up, I have like three backups for, for my scans and documents. At that one time early in my career when I lost everything was enough. I was in the middle of writing, uh, I think preserving your family photographs and the computer crashed and thank goodness I had printed out a draft to go through and edit. So what I had to do was retype the entire document into the computer. Talk about a good way to edit. It actually forced me to look at 
all everything I had written in a totally different way, but I wouldn't want that to happen again. Oh my goodness. So here's what Mark did this weekend when he bought that at the junk shop. He was going to sort out only the named ones, but the box was so big, I offered $10 and got around 800 photos and postcards. Wow, Mark, you could probably sell those postcards on eBay. There's a big market for postcards on eBay. The unnamed photos, not so much. I was actually on eBay just the other day looking at wedding photos, and not because I don't have a couple of hundred of them already, and I was surprised, really surprised at the value of them on eBay and how many of them went for way under $10. Um, there is no value in, in wedding photos anymore, which is hard to imagine. So let's get back to spring cleaning. I'm gonna ask you a question. How many photographs do you have on your computer? You need to answer me, <laughs> I need some feedback. And how many photos do you have on your telephone? Now I have a lot of storage on my phone, so I have a lot of pictures. So wouldn't it be great to be able to put all of your photos in one place? The scans, the, you know, link them all. And there is photo organizing software that helps with that. And I use Memory Web. And if you click on the link that I'll post in the Facebook Live uh, list of comments, you can save 30% on on getting memory web. And I really like it because it lets me tag the images and things like that. Pat Richley is saying that she scanned all of her photos and sent copies to her mom asking for info on the unlabeled circa 1900 to 1905 images. Her reply, these people are too ugly to be in our family. That's hysterical. That is absolutely hysterical. And Pat, here's your other comment. I've since surmised they were photos of my grandmother's friends. <laughs> That's a riot. So anyway, you're starting to respond as to how many photos you have. Uh, Mark says he has 5,000 plus. Lena has over 5,000. Nicole just says she has thousands. She doesn't have an exact number. Kate Keller, I'm not surprised, Kate, thousands and thousands. None on the computer, but thousands on the phone. I mean, we take pictures with our phone every second, right? I go to the store, I need something, I take a, I line everything up on the kitchen counter, take a picture, it's like my grocery list. And we have to clean them out. Uh, 60,000 is Deb. Yeah, these are not crazy numbers. This is what we live with today. And that's why weeding them is so important. Maureen has them all over the place, which drives her crazy, which is one of the reasons I like the Memory Web program because it syncs with all these different things, including Family Search and Dropbox and my computer and my phone. So all my photos are in one place. Look at this, Linda, you've inherited 15,000 plus photos and negatives from your parents and you're overwhelmed. Right, we're all in the same place. And Deborah says that no idea specifically, but she always downloads photos from her phone and camera onto her computer, then backs them up periodically to a separate drive and thumb drives. Then I post selections to Facebook. That's great. That's great. So you're share preserving and organizing and sharing uh, your pictures. Lena puts hers in a safe deposit box. Some of them, she trades them out every so often. Nicole said, and I never thought to do my grocery list that way. Oh, Nicole, there's all kinds of ways you can use that phone, <laughs> which is why mine is cluttered with all kinds of nonsense. Oh, my goodness. Can Memory Web find duplicates? I believe it does not allow a, a duplicate if it has the same file name. So you, you only get one up on the program. But we can ask them. We can ask the Memory Web folks, and I'll get an answer for you. But I'm pretty sure I asked that question already, and they said it will not. Uh, duplicate. And Deb is saying that she scanned everything in 2000, made copies, and then her parents made copies. And Diane, that's why we're talking today. Today's kids aren't going to want most of, most of this stuff, so what do we do? Digitize, then create books just to have something to hand down. So I have suggestions. We are talking about three separate categories of images. We're talking about the ones created during our lifetime, maybe even the digital, we'll call it the digital age even, because those need to get weeded almost immediately. I mean, you do run out of digital space sometimes, so not as much as 
we used to, but periodically it's a good idea to go through your phone. And I think the idea behind the Marie Kondo cleaning out the snapshots is that she was thinking in terms of this is the best quality image to keep. The rest, you know, maybe they're blurry, maybe they're off center. You know, you sort of think about what's the best photographs of an event, for instance. Uh, someone said that they had a phone full of photographs of their grandson's baseball game, but that's that's great. I have some of my son's soccer games, but the how many of those do I need? Do I really only want to keep some of them and delete them? We could do that. I know that my husband is uh, the family photographer around here. I know, shocker, right? I'm not the family photographer. I just keep all the old stuff. We we have a division of labor in this house, and uh, he after every vacation when he comes home and he has just like thousands of pictures, he will actually sit down and go through them all and delete a good two thirds of them and only keep the ones that really resonate with us uh, to keep us thinking about that vacation. And that's one of the things you can do. Then there are those images that we've collected, which are our, our kids' childhood, right? I mean, I have 12 years of photographs for each of my kids from those school portraits that were taken. And you know, you know when you get those at school, they used to say, and maybe they just do it all digitally now, but they used to do a paper prints and you could check which box did you want? Did you want one eight by 10 and three three by fives? Or, you know, anyway, you end up with way more photographs than you could ever possibly use. One year I took a lit of a whole group of them, um, put them in timeline order and put them in a frame. And at that point my in-laws were still living and I gave uh, one to my mom and I gave one to my mother-in-law and um, that one has since come back to me. And it's really nice. I sort of watch my kids grow up in the pictures, which is very cool. But I still have too many of them. We all do. And what I'm going to do is give some of them to my children. Maybe I'll make a frame for each of them. And then I have to say, I th I'm going to scan them, of course, and then I'm going to toss them. There's too many. I have too many. I have, I have a box of them. And I've been putting it off uh, just like everybody else. It just becomes an overwhelming thing. And then there are the other photos from earlier when you could send off film to be developed and then you get double and triple prints. Remember it was so cheap. You could say it was pretty much the same price if you wanted double prints or triple prints. And then we have all of those. Now, I don't know about you, but we never gave them to anyone else. Now, of course, we can share our images or we can scan the important ones and share them through our digital organizing software, whatever you choose to use. I share through Memory Web because the people on the other end don't actually have to have the program to look at the photos I'm sharing with them. They can even download them, which is very cool. So we have some comments here. Uh, look at this, all these comments. So Deb has said that she scanned all the photos, blurry ones as well, from my parents' photo. And once the copies were made, I let each sibling decide which ones they wanted to delete. They kept them all and made slideshows of them. Right. So you can scan them and you can share them. And there are all these different ways of sharing them. I did make a photo album for my sister for her birthday. It turns out I have all of her baby pictures. So I scan them and then put them together in an album for her. I did the same thing for my mom with her wedding photos. And that was a big hit at the holidays because you know she's 89. She says, I don't need anything at this age. But in fact, she did need that photo album. And it sits right out on her little table next to where she sits and watches TV and reads. Nicole says she just inherited five albums of baby photos of herself. And there is no way the world needs that many shots of me in diapers. You must have been a much beloved child, Nicole. Plus, I'm not sure where you are in the birth order, but what I discovered when I went through all my mom's things or my mom and dad's photos was that as the oldest, there are more photos of me, there are less photos of my sister and my much younger brother, there's pretty much nothing. <laughs> he has like one photo per year, mostly his school photos. We were just too busy at that point. 
Lena has uh, digitized her complete photo album. Some of the albums are now 100 years old and those, al those are saved and can be printed and bound into album format to share with other family members. Right, you want to share them. Linda Seebeck says that she inherited a photo from her mom and she, don't know, she doesn't know who the man is, but he's in a World War I uniform. He may have been a friend of my grandfather's in the US Navy during World War I. Is there a place to identify military photos from that time period? There is no particular site yes yet for World War I photos, uh, but if you send it to me, I'll take a look and see if I can see anything else in it that might give you some hints as to where else you can go. But soldiers did exchange pictures because they had friends. They made friends, they would go to the studio together, they would have pictures made and they would exchange them so that they could you know, remember their friends. Same like we used to swap uh, photos in high school, right? You get photos of your friends and I have some of those in my photo collection and they have some of me in their photo collections and their kids are probably saying, who is this person? And if you think about that in terms of the 19th century, we're still saying that for some of our ancestral photos because our ancestors swapped photos as well. They exchanged them with their friends. That's what they did. And they put them in albums. And so Pat Richley, when your mom said they're too ugly to be your family, you know, she, the woman who collected all of those images had done that to collect a lot of uh, pictures of their family and friends and neighbors even pop up in photo albums. So here's another question. So we talked about how many digital photos you have on your phone. We talked about how to weed them. And what I mean by weed them, you know, think you're gonna have to be tough with the weeding of the digital images, meaning the ones taken just since digital photography debuted, not necessarily everything you've scanned. And then, you know, weed those childhood photos and then pass them on because maybe someone else wants those pictures or maybe you can create an album for them and pass them on and that can work. So the question now is how many heritage photos do you own? Oh, and Lena says by sharing the albums and the photos with family members, many of the who is this have been identified and often with a date or at least a year. That's right. So the, you create one of these photo books and you bring it with you to your family reunion or family parties or family weddings and you hand it around. And I mean, it is sort of like a parlor game. Everyone wants to look at the photo albums and photo albums are back. You know, people really want photo albums. So when I scanned all those pictures in my mom's, uh, of my mom's wedding album, and then I went through all the family snapshots that had been given to me over the years and pulled out all these other photographs taken on their wedding day and put them together. So I put sort of the professional photos in the beginning and then all the snapshots I arranged in the back of this album. And one of the pictures is one of my absolute favorites. It's a color image of my mom and dad and they're all dressed up. They're quite stylish. Uh, and I thought this was an engagement photo of, of some sort that it was taken out in a garden. And I, so I put it in the wedding album thinking that this was their engagement picture. And even the photo detective can make an assumption. And you know what happens when you make an assumption. So anyway, my mom opens the little booklet that I created for her. And she says, I said, this is your engagement picture, right? And she goes, no, we were visiting someone in the hospital and they had a photographer there to take pictures of some of the people that were guests for some reason. I guess some enterprising photographer was out there selling pictures. It was a hoot. Um, anyway, but it sits in her, her wedding album now. So here we go, we're catching up. Julie has thousands and thousands of photos and slides from her family. Kate, I'm not surprised again, thousands and thousands. Jerry says she hasn't even started to scan her old pictures as I am stuck on what kind of good scanner to use. So Jerry, I have had an Epson scanner for as long as I've had a scanner and I just upgraded, but any of the Epson scanners are excellent and they come in various price points. And a flatbed scanner is something that I recommend. Actually, because you have a scanner on your smartphone. If you download the Google Photo Scan and get good using it, 
then you have a scanner and it does a really good job. But if you are going to start scanning a lot of images in your house, things that you have in the closet, in the basement, and wherever they're stored, and obviously basements are, are, in, are no-no for permanent storage, but you buy a flatbed scanner and you can buy one for under $100. And Epson's been around for a long time. They specialized in creating products for photographers. They did printers and all kinds of things. And so I love my Epson scanner. Uh, and I just bought another one because I thought it was time to upgrade because I couldn't upgrade the software on the one I have. Nicole is saying that she found a photo of her great grandmother and her grandmother tucked into the back of an old album from my parents' honeymoon. They probably, you know, that was the safest place to store them, Nicole. Oops, Mark saying that he has one line of his family was from Scotland and he got a message from a relative from Oklahoma that she saved my grandmother's trunk, which was full of photos from the 1880s. And that's how you found me. That's very cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. I was working on an article one time for uh, Irish Roots Magazine when I used to write a column for them years ago. And I needed to, I was looking around for someone to talk to me about family photos in Ireland and that's perfect timing for St. Patty's Day, which is right around the corner. And I reached out to this man on Flickr and said I was writing an article for Irish Roots Magazine. Would he talk to me about some of the old family, Irish families, he, photos he had on Flickr? And it turns out that he had gone to uh, Ireland on a trip and had found where his ancestors lived and found the exact house that they had lived in. And when he went, this is an amazing story. And when he went into the house, there was a bureau in there and he opened a drawer in the bureau and the bureau was full of discarded family photos. And he thinks they're his family. He brought them back and showed them around and, and they were identified. So you just really never know where you're gonna find those abandoned family photos. Claire says that she's brought photo albums to family events with post-it notes so that people can tag who's who without writing on the photo. That's a great idea. Uh, it's a good idea to create one, like a, a new album. So, because the post-it notes can sometimes lift off the surface of the picture. So you just gotta be careful with that, but that's excellent. It's an excellent idea because you're getting people to engage with the album and think about their family history. Oh, Deborah has a Canon uh, scanner, which she really likes. It doesn't really matter as long as you get a flatbed. I just really like flatbeds. And a lot of libraries are getting into this now where they have scanning areas for people to bring in their things that they want to scan and scan them there at the library and then they can take them home, which is great. It's really, really great. Oh, we have actually a question here, how to save photos glued to old black pages from the 19th and early 20th centuries. I know everyone wants to remove the photos from those black pages. But I want to caution you that by doing that, you're ruining the con or losing the context of the album because those photographs were put in there in a particular order. The other thing is everyone thinks that, well, they're going to take them out of the album and there'll be something written on the back. Nine times out of 10 or 9.5 times out of 10, there is nothing on the back. And those black paper pages are no longer damaging your photographs. It's the magnetic albums from the mid to late 20th century that do all the damage. Those black paper albums are great just the way they are. And it's really, really difficult to get the black paper off and you can ruin the photos by doing that. So Michelle, I'm gonna caution you on this. Maybe not a good idea. Uh, and you'd have to document the albums before you went too far. Uh, if you decide that it's definitely the way you're gonna go, but I can't advise it. Uh, Lina says, I inherited all the photos my dad took when he was overseas during World War II. They were all curled and jumbled in old shoe boxes and still working on restoring them, flattening and scanning them. 99% of them have no identification. And you know what? I have some of those myself, not as many. My dad wasn't a big photographer during World War II, but I do have a small collection 
of him and his friends. And I do recognize a couple of people that he kept in contact with uh, when we were children, but the most of them are a complete mystery. Claire says that, that on the fly, and then she goes back and labels them properly and removes the post-its. Yes, that's exactly right. So much feedback today. I have scanned photos and printed them out on eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper, put them in a binder and sent them with family to identify. Then they write all over them and add extra information. Right. So one of the reasons I like memory web is because I can write all this down in the caption and I can tag people. I can even create an album, uh, a tag, which doesn't interfere with any of my other tags for the person who identified all those pictures. So this way you can build a little tree of the people that you want to, the first people you want to show new pictures to that you find because they've been so great at identifying other ones. It's a great suggestion, Krista. One of the things I think we have to consider about, so obviously I haven't talked about weeding through your heritage photos because I don't believe in weeding my heritage photos. <laughs> Photos. I believe in in weeding the ones that were created during my lifetime, and certainly during my children's lifetime, because they're not going to want all these things. Our ancestors in the 19th century, you know, took a small, small percentage of photographs compared to what we take today. Um, I've heard statements that say that our ancestors took that we take in one year more than our ancestors took in the entire 19th century. And that, that may be true. That may be true. So we've talked about weeding a few different types of photos and really, you know, go on a digital diet, clean out your computer, clean out your digital photo files, and you clean out those childhood photos that people aren't going to want. Now slides, we haven't talked about slides and the slide thing is interesting uh, we all have hundreds, if not thousands and thousands and thousands of slides. You have to weed them. Only keep the ones that have significant value. And I actually found a, a picture of a building that's no longer standing in my town. And so that's important because there is no documentation for that structure at this point. So I'm going to keep that one. But all of the ones of me standing on like, you know, the Grand Canyon, how many of those do I actually need? Not too many because my kids aren't going to want them. They weren't, they weren't there. So uh, somebody was asking about supplies. So what do you need to take care of your photos? What's a basic photo organizing, photo identification kit? So I'm going to show you. I have two writing implements. One is something called a Zig photo signature pen. And I buy these. Uh, buy the box on Amazon. I buy 12 at a time. I have a whole box of them in the back of my closet. These are for your modern 20, for, you know, 20th century images. They're labeled photo safe, permanent ink, fade resistant, water resistant, dries quickly, and will not smear once dry. And the reason I buy them by the, you know, the box of 12 is because it's actually cheaper that way. So I can hand these out to people when I go to conferences sometimes. Sometimes I've sold them at the booth, uh, but they're they're pretty handy to have. The other thing I have is a ebony pencil. This is a jet black, extra smooth, really soft lead pencil that I buy also by the box at an art supply store. Um, you have to get a special sharpener for these, but you can also buy pencils that are regular width, uh, regular circumference that you don't need a special sharpener for that are six B or eight B that are very handy for marking pictures. I also buy an assortment of, I'm gonna reach back here and get this, an assortment of acid and lignin-free non-PVC sleeves. And I have them for all the different sizes. And I buy them by, they come a hundred in a pack and they're pretty inexpensive. And that keeps me for a little while. I have big ones, there's a big one, the giant one. This is a uh, five by seven, eight by 10 ish. And then this one for cabinet cards. And I found a new supplier for boxes that I really, really liked. And I'm going to give you the name of it. It's Archival Methods. And I'll find here it is archivalmethods.com. 
And one of the things I really, really like about this company is they have a secondhand store as part of their website. And I ended up with uh, a box for, I bought two drop front boxes, 20 and a half by 24 and a half, uh, two of them, and they were seconds. They weren't, I don't know what's wrong with them. They look perfectly good to me. And they're just gonna sit in my closet. Uh, I bought two boxes with shipping. The shipping was almost, my shipping was as much as the boxes. So the each box was like around $20. And that's pretty good. These are boxes are huge. Actually, I, I measured the closet space wrong. So they're, they're kind of big. Uh, but anyway, they came in no time. They came in just a few days. There was another company who will remain nameless that I bought boxes from and I ordered them on the 31st of December and I did not get them until the end of uh, the end of January, beginning of February. I actually called them and complained. Uh, and in the meantime, I had already found archival methods. And yes, Julie says that she loves them too. I found them by accident. I just stumbled across them. And they are my go-to place from now on, I'm not wasting my time uh, with other places. So that's what you need. Acid and lignin-free sleeves, non-PVC plastic. Um, what did I say? Non-PVC non sleeves, acid and lignin-free paper to put between some of your oversize, and acid and lignin-free boxes with a, a, sort of a sturdy construction. Do we have any other questions about spring cleaning before I jump into something that I think I'm going to spend an entire podcast on next month? Archival Methods is on Amazon. Oh my goodness, Julie. I did not know that. And yes, I have Prime. Free shipping or cheaper shipping. I will definitely check that out. And I'm not an Amazon affiliate. So I just, you know, buy my, I actually buy my polyester sleeves there. Now here's the thing. Uh, one of the things I wanna to talk to you about has nothing to do with spring cleaning, but it has to do with a topic that I, I think I am gonna spend an entire podcast on next time, which is protecting our images online. Because this article popped up, two articles popped up actually this week, and that just stunned me. Uh, and this was in the Wall Street Journal this week. And it said, think before sharing your baby's photo. Who would have even thought that on Instagram, there is a baby role play community where people find photos of children and babies on the internet, repost them and pretend the children are their own. This is a real thing. Uh, the other thing I found just recently was another article talking about facial recognition and how uh, some companies are mining our photographs online and no, oh, it's not good in general. So anyway, I think next month when I do, or maybe even next week, I'm so worked up about it all. I really wanna talk about, uh, you know, <laughs> safeguarding your photographs when you post them online. And I can share some experiences uh, from past Roots Tech where I have done a lecture on photo safety online uh, a couple of times. And I think it's, it's something we need to talk about and I think it's something we all need to be aware of. But anyway, let's get back to spring cleaning. It's a much perkier, happier topic. So tune in, I will post something out there that'll say when my podcast is gonna be out. I wanna do a little more research on it before I uh, share some things. I might even make it even into a mini presentation uh, to share with all of you because I feel so passionately about it as much as I do about cleaning. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me today. If you have any other questions, I'm on for just another few minutes. Anybody else have any questions having to do with spring cleaning? If not, I will post the Memory Web app that you can use to save 30% on their product. Thank you for supporting uh, the photo detective. And Julie, thank you very much. She would appreciate a podcast on the safety of online photos. Yes, I think, I think that's definitely my next topic. Definitely. Anyway, see you next time. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for watching and listening. 
You can submit your questions for future episodes using the Ask Maureen button on MaureenTaylor.com or through any of my social media contacts. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as The Photo Detective and on Facebook at Maureen Photo Detective. I hope you'll come back for the next show. Don't forget to send me your questions.